they ordered me out of my vehicle and they asked me to put my hands on top of the police vehicle so they can search me as if I were a criminal. Uh, my name is Arnie Viarell, um, retired Compton cop out of the city of Compton. You know, um, I saw some interesting news uh, this past week of... Um, crazy. Yeah, crazy. Mayor... Wait, wait, bring it in. You think it's true? I think it's true. Okay. Okay. The um, mayor, the mayor of Compton, Mrs. Brown, had um, been pulled over by the LESO Service Department there in the city of Compton. And the way, you know, you, you can go to the, um, uh, the link and it'll show you exactly what had, ha what had transpired or what she talks about, what had transpired. It was a little crazy. I was saying to myself, how could these cops do that, man? You know? But then it rang my, you know, my, my gigabyte kind of unfroze. And I, uh, my, one of my partners, a former colleague, man, that I was a cop with there in Compton, great guy. And his story will come out very soon that he has it all recorded on how these uh, LSO deputies uh, accosted him just about six months ago there at Wilson Park. And um, it's a, uh, wow, man. And uh, good buddy of mine. We both have been retired for a bit now. And uh, he was a great cop there in Compton. And um, he was one of um, Kevin's best friends. And, uh, uh, but you'll hear, hear his story. It'll come out soon. Getting back to um, his, um, this LESO group called the Executioners, right? Is what they're calling themselves. And um, well, back in my day when I was a cop there, you know, which wasn't too long ago, but you know, over 20 years ago, is um, they called themselves the Vikings, you know, and they came out of Linwood Station, and um, it was like a brotherhood. It was like a um, what do you call that in college? That group uh, fraternity, you know, of of men and women. I I, I believe it was women too. Um, but they got tattoos of uh, Vikings, you know, uh, white supremacists. I guess I don't know, you know. But um, <laughs> you know, it, it's just crazy to me to see these groups pop up like that. It's just uh, first of all, there was a question there: uh, Why does Compton PD do this? You know, well, first of all, it's not Compton PD no more. We, we were defunct in 2000. Um, it's the LA Sheriff's Department there in the city of Compton. Compton PD has nothing to do with it. Getting on to this, this isn't the first time the executioners, they also have their little cliques in the jails. They have their, you know, cliques outside, you know, but it's a whole different breed of cop out there, especially coming, deriving from uh, the LA, sh you know, uh, Sheriff's Office, is uh, I worked with them. Um, I wasn't a deputy, um, but, you know, we would run into them day and night throughout the city um, because they're, they boarded us. So, you know, some of them were, were rude, you know, some of them were, you know, big, you know, old fed white guys, you know, but, um, hey man, I'm a big, you know, bean fed, fed Mexican. So, you know, you can have it both ways. But <clears throat> I remember applying for the sheriff's department and um, going to their uh, place up there in Whittier and doing all, you know, testing. And they were bringing outsourcing guys from back in the South, you know. And th these guys were big, man. You know, they're big white guys, you know. Yeah, man, you know. And, uh, and, well, you know, I got cut short. So, you know, said so and score high enough on the oral exam, you know, but hey, man, it's okay. Like, you know, you keep trying. You keep going to other departments and you keep trying. As I saw this executioner thing, you know, it, it wow, man, it, it, it saddened me to see these group of guys gather together and they want to be homies and they want to, hey, man, get the tattoo I'm getting, you know. No, man, you shouldn't be doing that. You know, if you do, you God, you're you're stupid. You know, I'm just, you know, you're putting yourself on Front Street, man. Right. You know, for one, I'm not trying to hide it or nothing, but don't do it. 
you know I remember back in Compton there was a group of black guys that wanted to start their own black officers association you know and that got kicked in the nuts <laughs> You don't have the balls. Real fast. The older OGs, black guys, white guys, oh no, nah, man, they weren't going to go for it. Um, so that got squashed. But you see, again, when Compton PD went defunct, they contracted with the Sheriff's Department. And that's a whole other story. But certain people thought that they were going to get cushy positions with the LA County, with, with, with the LA County. You, like I said before, you never give up your police agency within your city. You just don't do it. You give up all your rights. You know, there, uh, Compton PD, you know, you have, you know, so many guys in patrol, your own detective bureau, your own special investigations bureau, you know, motors, helicopters, you know, uh, you, you had an array of, you know, what you could go, what you can have here at the LA County Sheriff's Department. Back then, we were probably spending, I don't know, 12 to 16 million a year. I can't remember, you know, I can't put my finger on it. But what I found out is that they're, they're spending 22 million for probably a year, half of what they're getting now, what they got from us. 22 million a year. 22 million a year. Be careful what you wish for. You know, it was good for the, for the men and women of the police department because their pay just went off the board but it's not good for the community for the citizens for the local government because a lot of these cops that were there in Compton like I have to go back they were born and raised in Compton knew the demographics knew the people they had a lot of respect you know I knew guys like Blue uh, uh, Dwayne uh, Eric you know that would if they had an issue with some gang uh, uh, aff affiliates, they went straight to them and knocked on the door and said, hey man, this shit's got to stop. And they could do that. LSO, they can't do it because they're not homegrown. They're brought in, it's a training ground for deputies and they pumped out to other, other departments. That's what it is. So you don't get that camaraderie with the community like we did. So they go out there like gangbusters and probably mistreat citizens um, like they did the mayor, like they did my partner, and those are just a couple. Okay, so I find out about this, the, this executioners, about how they were, you know, um, uh, targeted somehow, but they weren't targeted. You know, like, again, just, you know, People, getting why? an ego, getting why, an ego, getting an like ego this? of... Um, of, of, of building this group because of they want to be, they think it's a way to be effective. And it's not, you know. Um, you form this group and you only let certain people in. It's like a mafia, a <laughs> small little mafia, you know. And um, so I guess one deputy was a whistleblower. And, you know, Art Gonzalez, I know how you feel, man. Um, and I feel for you. Um, if you need to contact me, I'd love to walk you through this and um, uh, give you a hand in it. But uh, for them to punk you, you know, F them, man. You know, they, uh, it's sad. You don't do that. I think the only thing we did at Compton PD was we did rookie hazing. If you're a rookie, man, you got hazed. You know, and I was one of them that did something stupid, you know, I, and, and I got some days off for it, but he was a rookie. If you can't handle it in the department with other guys, then you can't handle it out in the street because those guys are going to punk you. They're going to try and call your ticket, man, and you got to know how to handle it, you know. But in order, but for have your own group in there hate you and put on the call box, you know, uh, Art's a snitch. Art's a rat. Art's a rat. Fuck you, man. You know? And uh, it shouldn't have happened. And and my partner that was accosted there in Compton by these deputies, wait till you see the video. It's going to come out. And um, um, 
the, the sheriff better take some steps in controlling that department. So they, they grow this persona like, you know, oh, I'm, you know, I'm John Wayne, you know, and I, you know, pew, pew, you know, and I could do what I want. And you can't, man. You know, you're always being watched. And that was one of the first things that my T.O., my sergeant taught me when I first, 22-year-old rookie, man, you know, wet behind the ears, say, hey, man, you treat, the, you treat people out here the way you want to be treated because you never know who you're talking to. You could be talking to the mayor, the council person, the city manager, uh, a director of uh, city services, or their children or their wife. So always be respectful because it'll come back and you'll get hunted for it, right. you know? I mean, you'll get some days off, some steel bills, you know, so you better, you know, you better, you know, watch it, man. You know, learn this, be respectful. Now, if, if somebody comes at you raising a fist and, you know, then you take care of business, you know, but, you know, you, you really need to, um, so that's what I was telling my, my, my daughters, that they grow into it. It's uncontrollable for some men, some women. But the thing about these the, the deputies is that they're incubated in the local in the local jails for two maybe four years. So when you're incubated in that jail for two to four years, you become one of them. You're around shit, you know, and you become an angry person because you're around it so much. And then when you get out, you're an angry person and you got to hold it in, you know, and then you get sent to Compton where it's, you know, uh, it's a poor populated city. There are some great citizens in there. You know, you're, you do stupid stuff and then they're not, you know, like on a swing shift there in Compton, we have about anywhere, you know, eight to 10 units, maybe 12 units out. Probably they're in LASO, man, right now, they're lucky if they get four, you know? I would so imagine. About four? About, probably, from what I've been told. And that, so they can pull from other cities to come in and help if they need assistance for service. Yeah. <clears throat> but, you know, you, when, when these officers, they, they get that persona, persona, it's hard. Just like the George Floyd thing happened, you know? That officer had so many, you know, things in his back, yes. it, it, yeah, uh, his backpack there, you know, and um, um, yeah, you know, he shouldn't have had his, his knee on his neck, you know, but then again, even when I'm watching it, I'm saying to myself, maybe that's not the cause of death. Maybe, you know, once they do the autopsy, they can see what the cause of death is, okay? So, but still, this guy had so many, you know, uh, complaints against him over 20 years, and he's still in patrol. That's the, that should be a ring. I mean, you know, let your headlight, the headlight should go off, saying, this guy's still in patrol. How come he's not in a specialized assignment, not a detective, not a lieutenant, not some, you know, what's wrong with you, man? You know, why would you want to be in patrol your whole life? I just, I, I can never get it, you know. But some guys do, they dig it, you know, but I don't know, that's not me. Well, I guess they got a hold of it and they just got rid of it, you know, so poor. Yeah, what do you, like swept it under the rug? Swept it under the rug, you know. See Yeah, the three monkeys, you know. So that's why, again, I tell you, law enforcement needs to be revamped. It's got to... You got to have a check and balance system, you know, or else you start losing control. Um, and uh, so, yeah, they got swept under the rug and now, you know, Art, you know, he can't uh, uh, continue his career as a law enforcement officer there. Because, you know, when you become a whistleblower, well, you know, you just, you know, you're, you're written out, man, you know, and, uh, it, and it's sad. You know, um, so that's why I kind of believe it, but there's always, uh, you know, you believe half of what you hear and, and half of what you see, 
you know, but in this instance, I got to tell you, man, you know, it happened to my own partner. You know, I just talked to him the other day about it, you know, and, and, and he has it all on recording, you know, and then I happened to uh, Mayor Brown. How do you not know your mayor for the, for the city you work for? So that's why I say, and you know, I see these photos of these um, deputies, you know, and I, I'm just going, oh my God, you know, you, you guys, you guys, you know, well, good luck, man, you know. And, uh, but yeah, you know, I, I, I feel bad uh, on that instance. Again, there, you know, it's not comp and PD. You know, when I was there, I don't remember having nothing like that. Nothing? No, man. You know, like I told you, the closest we got was the, um, the All um, Black Officers Association. You know, I guess they want to be part of a crew, you know, that, you know, um, like they feel wanted, but I mean, you're already in law enforcement. That's, you know, should be it. And your main goal in law enforcement is to keep advancing, you know, to a training officer, to a sergeant, to a lieutenant, to a captain, you know, and, 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 and so forth, you know, and do it right, you know, do it, you know, um, uh, correct. Um, have some character, man. Um, it's just, it's, you know, but again, there, you know, you, you hate to Monday morning quarterback these guys and, um, and really, <laughs> you know, uh, but it's, I, I think it's a idiotic thing for them to do. You know, um, you're getting paid to do one thing and that's to enforce the law and um, do it right and uh, do it honestly and truthfully. And, and and not to do this type of other activity while you're on duty. Shenanigans. Yeah, <laughs> shenanigans, you know. But um, you know, so that, that that was a topic of today is answering that guy's question. Is you know, it's not Compton PD, it's LSO now. Um, and uh, I hope they do get down to the root of it to um, correct it and correct it swiftly. Get it, you know, get it over with. To you, Mrs. Brown, um, it, it's very concerning to see what's happening in that city and uh, what you lost and because of the uh, stupidity of your former local government leaders that let that happen and let Comp and PD, you know, become defunct. And uh, be careful what you wish for. And now it's coming to that. You know, and I know my, the former uh, Mayor Eric Parrott and tried to get the police department back, but the citizens of uh, Compton they voted it down, you know. And um, um, really? yes, so hope you know maybe it's in the works, but it's it's going to take a lot of money, you know. It, it it just didn't happen overnight, you know. With um, having you know the the motor unit, having the helicopters there, having the gang unit, the narcos unit. You know, the, our detective bureau that we had that handled everything from A to Z. We didn't call in anybody else from the outside agency to handle a homicide. You know, uh, we did it ourselves upstairs um, when you became a detective. Again, you know, Art, I got to leave you with, you know, uh, stay strong, you know, be true to what you, uh, what you believe in. And, um, you know, hopefully uh, the sheriff goes in there and uh, takes care of business, you know, and it's, uh, don't have that good old boy, you know, uh, uh, brotherhood system involved, man. Yeah, and you know, again, I put out my myself to you, Art, uh, contact me uh, at um, uh, narcos at .com. Um if, if you need some um, uh, motivation and uh, guidance and, um, um, uh, help um, and, and uh, stop uh, don't worry about it man try not to worry about it you know um, you'll be all right it'll come through and you'll go off into another maybe if you want to stay in law enforcement go to uh, another agency and kick ass again I leave you with the three things you know we only have one Lord Jesus Christ and we're all his uh, his his lambs and you know he's our one shepherd and uh, per John 10 16 
again you know uh, use your turn signal when you when you drive when you're ready to turn come on now again be respectful three push a chair in after you eat at a restaurant or even at your dinner table your own dinner table start off small those small little steps and again go to my website if you like what I'm wearing um, there's some other uh, good stuff on there uh, www dot a compton cop dot com and uh, contact me at narcos at a compton cop dot com remember leave a uh, um, leave a comment uh, tell me what you think and uh, I'll see you soon be safe out there stay alert stay alive oh man yeah we get a call of a, of a homicide no not a homicide a gunshot victim on Thanksgiving Day and the two brothers were fighting over uh, a turkey leg <laughs> literally fighting over a turkey leg so yeah man we uh we get called me and my buddy uh oscar van we so we go on out there sure enough man we get the witness you know um uh statements yeah man my brother my brother you grabbed a rifle a shotgun and, and they were fighting over the chicken leg and you know he i want the chicken leg or the turkey leg and he grabbed a shotgun so when the other brother put his hands up to block the shotgun it tore off like both half of his wrist okay so he's laying there and then um they rush him off to the hospital you know and i saw him about five years later and he has braces on his hands you know he's still living but he has no use of his hands he's pretty jacked up you know so he um but my partner oscar van we he um we find the guys watching the corner and it's a timex and oscar picks it up and he goes hey ernie it's still ticking <laughs> at time it takes a lick and it keeps on ticking you know inside you know it's, it's sickening you know but you got to have a sense of humor when you see some stuff like that